the word, Emma was left in the King's Road. Well, Amanda the Cadney got a lot of pressure. It was always like who her dad was, who her mum, you know, her, her lineage. Emma was, they didn't know where to place her. I remember at school thinking Emma Ridley was a complete slag and had a really low opinion of her. It wasn't until later that I met her that I thought she was actually all right. She was associated with the, 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 the middle to upper, but she wasn't. I mean, you wouldn't find Emma Ridley at the Cartier Polo. She, she was getting the same press that Jordan would get now. And Emma it was whose cunning stunt created the definitive wild child image of the 80s. There was a fashion show. Emma felt the show was rather boring. And I was always rowdy and loud and obnoxious. So she went on stage and, for whatever reason, took her clothes off. <laughs> Which I kind of did without caring. I went on stage and, uh, with my belt, you know, gently, doo-doo, you know, an outrageous moment uh, disrupting the show. I came off stage and Richard Young goes, who is she? I said, it's Emma Ridley. And, she, and um, she's 14. The next thing I know, bang, that was it. And I said, she's a wild child, and I'd never said that expression before. But if the media were enthralled to the wild child that Perino had created, they were to be less than thrilled with the next chapter in the story. Emma would trump the other wild child girls. She'd marry Robert. He was 30, she was 15. I had a slight, you know, I felt slightly, God, I'm doing something illegal, I'm with a girl that's underage, it's illegal. Unless I flew to Holland, and that's expensive to fly to Holland for, um, you know, intimacy. So um, I thought, I'll do the honourable thing. He was suffering serious depression, and it was probably due to the end of a very long relationship. I was still very hurt, you see, because the long-term girlfriend who left me for Marco Pierre White uh, said she loved me, but she wasn't in love with me, which meant she didn't fancy me which meant I had to go and find people who fancied me because I was low self-esteem. And then you had this um, um, jumping bean of a young, very, very pushy girl who just pushed him around. I was like, we're getting married. You know, we were like totally in love. It was like a week into our relationship or whatever. This was most certainly a career move for Emma. Before I knew it, sitting in here with Maria Raymond, who was then married to my friend Howard Raymond, Paul Raymond's son, said, Robert, you're in love? I said, yeah. Get married. We'll organise it. She was, she had tenuous links to News of the World. So I said, why not? She said, um, what do you think this story is worth, etc., etc." Yes. And, um, and she was pretty much, I'll have 10,000, thank you very much. And then, she, and then Maria Raymond happened to say, well, Vegas, you can get married. You know, so like, okay, great, we're going to Vegas. Maria put up the 10,000 pounds Emma wanted, certain she'd be a winner in Las Vegas. There is nobody out there in journalism who would have missed this. Well, I remember Reverend Dwayne Williams. He was the, he was the um, pastor, or whatever you call him, Reverend. Um, he was an ex-truck driver. He was really cool. She was wearing a lovely, lovely white dress, and she had her the wedding ring, and it was all—it was a little white wedding. And then there was a moment when we both stood, myself and Robert, both stood and looked in each other's eyes, like. We're really doing this, like in all this chaos. <laughs> We're really getting married. And then we went to Caesar's Palace for Surf and Turf. She obviously was very tired and emotional. By that time, I'd had seven Long Island iced teas or whatever. Oh my God, the hissy fit. I think I did, actually. There was the whole display of food, and I put my arm all through the food. I was like, I'm going to my room. <laughs> and um, pushed the food all over everybody and fell asleep, sucking her thumb. And at that moment, I knew. I knew. I was a brat. I was a real brat. But now the happy couple had to face the wrath of an outraged press. Their troubles were only just beginning. One national paper dispatched 30 staff on the job, and they were told to not show their faces again until they show up with that girl. The late 80s were a time of intense tabloid rivalry, with papers like The Sun, The Star and The Mirror going head-to-head -head for the big stories of the time. And few were bigger than the marriage between 15-year-old wild child Emma Ridley and Robert Perino, a man twice her age. 
papers wanted this girl so badly that one national paper dispatched 30 staff on the job and they were told to not show their faces again until they show up with that girl. There was once a character called Blackie who happened to be a donkey and, and, the, and the sun, the mirror and the star were all, all chasing this poor donkey. Now, I mean, there's no pin-up, but, you know, people went mad over that. And I had her in a hotel right next to where I lived. Anyway, I, I made the awful mistake of using the ladies, you see. So I went into the loo, I came out, Emma was gone. This girl actually went out on the town. She went to every club known to man. Thankfully, the press were scouring every hotel known to man in Britain. Not one photograph appeared of her. The cleverness of this was that um, Perino and, and, and Ridley were basically the architects of their own scandal. They were willing victims, if you, if you like, in, in that scandal. And they realized there's a great deal of money, there's a great deal of fame, there's a great deal of everything to be made by being in league with the, with, with, with the media, with the people who are hunting for scandals. But Robert was about to discover the price of riding the bucking bronco of press fame. The media were outraged by the wedding, and it wasn't Emma they went after, but the adults in the story, him and Mrs Ridley. Oh, I think wherever you've got a wild child, you've got to see who is the wild child's mother. Um, I think they were entitled to come in for a lot of stick because they were patently promoting the daughters to have careers. For what? For nothing. For doing outrageous things, for taking the clothes off and, like I say, having 10 million boyfriends, being sexually, quotes, liberated. Angela Ridley always maintained that she had Emma's best interests at heart and claimed she joined her in the clubs to look after her. The celebrityness went to my mum's head as, you know, to, as well as everybody's and then it was just, we can just play and party. I mean, the mum loved it. Out of all of the people, the mum bought into the whole thing. She loved it. You know, suspenders in the paper. My mum still will look at me and say, I don't want to grow up. <laughs> Why should I grow up? The tabloid frenzy paid off for Emma with a presenting job on the youth TV programme, The Roxy. Well, whatever's happening, I'm there and it's happening, so I'm here. But for Robert, things were very different. He was seen as an old man using a young woman. And he wouldn't be the last. And I just went into a bit of a depression about the whole thing felt uh, a bit lost. Young women, I guess, have this power and sexuality, probably, which, you know, can probably seduce an older man, if, if that's what the younger woman wants. Oh, they've always held the power of the girls, even more now. They've all, I mean, we're just peacocks, men. You've got to feel sorry for us. As her husband, Don't do it for the angle. <laughs> Funnily enough, in the Crazy Larrys especially, I never saw Rob. It's like we were off doing our own thing. I'd be on the dance floor. He'd probably be, I don't know, kissing some girl in the bathroom, even though, you know, which I didn't know at the time. The cracks appeared in the married life. When we broke up, actually, I said to him, you know, I'll only remotely think about getting back together with you if you tell me all the girls that you kissed or slept with. And I thought it'd be like one and two, and then he started reeling off this list of how unfaithful he'd been. I was like, okay, that's it, we're over. Fidelity. What's that? What's fidelity? As the decade ended, so did the nation's fascination with the wild child girls. Emma's TV career faded, and in 1992, she left for the States. But America was not to be the promised land that she'd hoped for. Her second marriage to a millionaire record producer in his 50s produced a son but ended in divorce, and she suffered periods of depression. There's been moments in my life when I have really been down. You know, at 27, when I was trying to rethink my whole life, and. You know, whatever goes up must go down, and I can be really up and really high, and then boom, you know, way down. What did wild child mean to me? That I was 
a wild, out-of-control child, <laughs> which I was quite proud of. 